Hi guys. I haven't posted anything for a while. I don't know what I look like. Cause I've not been feeling well. I'm just standing here waiting for the numbness to go away on my entire leg because I have a pinched nerve and it happened after that lovely dinner that I had with my husband which by the way I can't remember if I posted I think I did because it was the post before Saturday you any whispers perhaps I don't know I'm trying to get the strength to do a post now because I would have liked to have done another Yarny Whispers this weekend, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and I'm not sure when it will happen, but I did want to discuss the winners and who I have given stuff to so far, which is really not very many people. <laughs> I have to finish, uh, I have to do the coupons and I have to um, do some other stuff. I can't remember what right now because I can't think straight, but I am not feeling well. I haven't been feeling well. I wasn't feeling well when I did Yarny Whispers, uh, but I sucked it up like a champ and I dealt with it even though my leg was killing me while I was doing the show. Um, and it was a really awful, awful weekend full of pain and misery and but I did a lot of knitting because I couldn't move a lot of massaging my leg with that that wand that my husband got me which is phenomenal phenomenal also uh highly recommend that asper spray asper asper something spray that stuff's really great don't recommend anything with aspirin or ibuprofen if you're taking medication because it might trigger your nervous system like it does mine and make you feel like you're on uppers <laughs> that's not right it does not make me feel like i'm on uppers what an idiot it makes me feel like i'm on stimulants which are uppers i understand that but that's not what i mean i meant like caffeine god jesus lord have mercy I'm in, I'm in intense pain, uh, but it's not as bad right now. It's much, much better than it was before. So anyway, <laughs> so I was going to start jibber jabbering about absolutely nothing. And then this happened. literally just jumps on top of me like no you don't want to do that you don't want to vlog today you don't want to knit do you mom no you want to pay attention to me you need me to sit on you and smother you with love i don't but i'm too tired honestly to resist i don't i don't know what happened I don't know if it's it. I'm squinting because the light is coming down on me and I, like I can't get comfortable and I also don't have my glasses so I can't see and I can't move because my dog is sitting on my sweater oh my god I swear 
you guys uh chronic illness uh you would think that as knitters really the only chronic illness that would really get us is something that you know really affects our brain uh or really affects our ability to move our hands Maybe that's what some people think. Maybe that's what I thought. I don't know, but it's not true. Mm. So I have like a thousand and one different things wrong with me. But on occasion, my leg decides to give out and just the sciatica pain, I guess, just runs down the length of my leg and causes this like insane nerve, like pinched nerve sensation or numbing sensation or just pain that radiates down my back down my leg the back of my leg down my whole backside so I was about to sit here and go this is what I use to help myself to heal myself and my dog just decided to sit on top of everything because she's more important than anything else so that's not happening um, so why don't we just talk about my gloves? Uh, cause that's all I have to talk about. I don't have anything else. So remember I knit two left gloves? Well, I completed the two right gloves. Mittens? Why am I calling them gloves? I completed them. Maybe I should put them on. So I could show you that I'm not lying. Yeah. For the thumbnails. Get it? <laughs> ah, no, I don't get it either. Um, so here we go. So I haven't done the thumbs. I was trying to. And it didn't uh, quite work out. I did knit two thumbs from the top down. but And I tried to attach it. But it gets this really ugly seam, so I'm going to remove it. And I'm just going to do it the traditional way, which is just pick up the appropriate number of stitches and get uh, that done correctly. Because while, you know, knitting it from the top down without doing any increases here, uh, that was dumb. Like, just really dumb. But isn't it cute, you guys? The I love this thumb. It it's such a shame. I have, where's the other one? Here it is. My other thumb. And it would have worked if it weren't for that pesky increase that is needed down in the bottom. See? Look at how perfect that looks. Except it doesn't look like it reaches all the way down. Anyway, it was a nice thought. Mm, but that's not going to work out, is it? So I'm going to have to pick up the stitches. So now I have four of the same gloves. So I guess my sister is going to get a pair Maybe for her birthday? I just have to do the thumbs. Isn't it so cute? So this pattern here, uh, as you can tell, is a shambles. And the reason for that is because it's not a pattern. I just twisted some stitches and purled some stitches and then did a knit row. Just did a, like a twisted knit stitch and a purl repeat till I'm done and then knit the next row and alternate the next row with purl and then a twisted stitch it was dumb and that's what I got you know I kind of like it I mean this this is the second obviously the second mitt I didn't like it as much as I liked the first ones the first ones are were super cool. I like the way they came out. It kind of looks like fish scales, actually. 
Um, so I kind of like it. Eh. I did mittens. Uh, so now I have those two pair of mittens to uh, do the thumbs for. And I have the other pair of mittens to do the thumbs for. And I am now working on this pair of mittens. And I'm in love. I broke this little stitch marker. I, I, a uh, progress keeper, I have a tendency to break them a lot. I'm not very careful with my stuff. Either my dog sits on it or I put it somewhere and slam something else on top and they break. So, um, I'm going to try and, because these, <laughs> I'm so disappointed. You can see her whole, like, look at. Look at all that detail on this little, little thing. Uh, and it's missing the whole other side. I'm so upset. I just found it recently and I just can't believe it. I I can't believe that I did that. This little thing is so freaking adorable. And I broke it. It's just yet another of Sammy's tiny trinkets that I freaking broke. And I'm so disappointed. But, I mean, look at the detail tell it's so cute you guys it's just so cute uh and i love it so so much look at the little fascinator up there i don't know how she does that <clears throat> but i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try and scoop them all out from wherever they're hiding and put them up somewhere so i don't keep breaking them because that's it's really disappointing that i keep breaking them but these are my what of a kind Christmas mittens uh, made out of my one of a kind Christmas yarn, which I think I showed last episode. Um, I'm, I think I'd already wound it up, uh, balled it up, caked it up. I think I'd already done that as well because it, his, it was just sitting there. Um, but I do remember this was just like something I kind of, tossed together in the water in the uh, pan and hence the little bits that I wasn't too happy with but um, they did a bouquet I feel like mm, maybe the randomness of that one of a kind I'm not exactly thrilled with what that looks like I really should have made sure you guys I'm I'm in so much pain that I just can't I can't think I can't concentrate I'm kind of shaking a little bit um I might need to take another pain medication um just to get over this but my goodness okay so here's what I'm trying to show you can kind of see it looks a little mucky and I don't like that. I guess if you're going for like a Christmas tree and I don't know, holly, red, I don't know, red presents. I don't know if you're going for like a Christmas tree vibe, then yes. But see, see those bits of bits of brownie flecks in there that those are not intentional like that one that one's the one that bugs me and that just a little bit of just look like uh, kind of looks like tea got spilled on my mittens and I don't like that's I don't like that I, I don't like that at all and I hesitate to do that combination again because what if I do that um, again? See those bits? I don't know. If it's intentional, then that's one thing. But it's not. It wasn't, I don't think. And so that's why I don't like that. But I think they are coming along. And they're still looking cute. 
I think that the, they'll still look nice when they're finished, but I don't like the way I did the um, top of it either. I feel like it's a little bit too square. I just went ham on this one and I just did all increases to see what would happen. I just did increases. I didn't do any knit rows in between. So it just spread that out like a square. If you could kind of just And square mittens are not attractive. No. So I understand why the need for a knit row in between your increases. But a knit row after each increase gives you a triangle. I don't like that either. Don't like that. For these mittens, whoops, I dropped one and I'll forget. For these mittens, I loved the increase that I did because it was kind of triangle, kind of round, kind of just what I like, right? If I went out and got a pattern, I'd figure it out. But am I going to do that? No. You see that? I don't like that. That's, I think, the second pair of mittens. I don't know. I don't know why that happens. Ugh. I just, I can never get it right. And I want to get it perfect. So I could just write down the exact way that I like my mittens to be done. I've got the thumbs uh, the thumb gusset from the top down just the way I like it. All I have to do is pick up these stitches. I would prefer if I could just knit those thumbs from the top down and just sew it on real quick. That would take me seconds or even crochet it on. Just seconds. But no, it's difficult. And I have to do those increases down here because otherwise I can't get my damn thumb through, guys. Like... That's, it's not happening. It's too tight. It's unforgiving. It's unrelenting. It's not going to happen. It's really annoying, actually. But that, doesn't that look pretty, you guys? Look at that. I wish I could duplicate this. I have no idea. I mean, I think I know which I think I should know because I know I was dying protomolecule when I did this. Uh, when I just, I, these were just what was left over. So for sure, these, some of these were protomolecule. But like, what else? <sighs> some black. I don't know. But this, I mean, I can't, I, maybe one day I'm going to try and recreate this. I don't think I'll be able to. No. Because I'm literally wearing my protomolecule socks right now, and it, it does not look like this. It doesn't look like this at all. I think it's, if it's not the protomolecule... I think what I'm wearing is star-crossed. I think I'm wearing star-crossed. I can't remember my own yarn. <laughs> but anyway, I love this one so, so much. I wish I could duplicate it, but I, I don't have the recipe for that. I also don't have the recipe for that. But I don't think that one would be too hard. Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what colors I used, but... I don't think that would be too hard. I could probably do it. Okay, so I think I've done enough talking. My leg is going numb because I'm leaning. Um, so, 
I ordered a couple of things and I'm sorry that I'm so close to the camera but I'm sitting on my recliner I'm, everything's up super close and I know I'm doing this whole situation here my dog is on me like I'm leaning on my leg on my bad leg it's everything's just a freaking mess right now you guys I am so fucking tired This is my little mushroom and Christmas gnome cup that I got at cost, I think it's cost plus or cost world plus. It's just the cutest thing ever. And it's really super big. I've had it for, for a year now. That's my regular Earl, Earl Grey with milk and a little vanilla. Uh, not Mexican style this time. I do like my cinnamon in it, but I didn't choose to add it today. Not that you would really care. Like, why would you care how I make my tea? Maybe you do. I don't know. I don't speak for you. Okay. Um, so I bought a couple of things and I'm excited. And I think I'm also going to try and see if I can get a last minute advent. Something that I can afford because I can't really afford much right now. Like, mm, life is so expensive right now, you guys. It's outrageous. And we just had to get a new car battery for my husband because his freaking car died. I know we've got to get one of my tires uh, definitely replaced because we keep going. He, poor thing. I don't know how he does it at 5 o'clock in the morning or or in the middle of the night or, you know, before we go to bed, he will go put gas in my car and refill my air, my tire with air because they're all a mess. During the winter time, it's always really bad. It's this Ford C-Max situation um, with that car. It, it, there's something about that car because it's got a super heavy battery that um, the tires always get funky around winter time when the temperature changes, really. So he has to constantly be refilling them. And then one of them is particularly in dire straits and it needs to be changed. So it's like oh, one thing after the next, after the next, after the next that needs to be dealt with and replaced. And my kitchen is dirty again. It's not, it's really not. It just needs to be picked up. But it's annoying me because I've been so unwell this whole weekend. Um, during the Yarn Whispers weekend, it was just wowzers i was a wreck i slept for hours and hours and hours um just trying to get over all the pain that i was in um i used everything that i could um my dog finally got off of most of the stuff but this is the the um thing that i use with lidocaine you guys if you have sciatica or that like just like pain it it helps um it helps a lot. Um, I also use this stuff called salompas. I've always used those. They're kind of like this minty patch. Um, those are very helpful. I used this thing. <laughs> it's, look at it. It looks like a freaking hammer. But I just, I use that on medium strength all up and down my leg. And I just do it myself. I don't let anybody touch me. And my husband's like, let me do it. Let me do it. No, sir. Stay away from me with your giant hands. No. No, thank you. Do not touch. <laughs> I can't, you guys, I can't stand any bit of pressure. It's just too much. It's just too much. I feel like, I feel, gosh. How can I put it? Let's say your level one pain is my level three, four, three. Let's, uh, let's take it easy and say like, I feel three times more pain than, than most normal people do. So your slight headache is like, I gotta sleep. 
I could only imagine. Some people say, no, it's the opposite. You have a high pain threshold because I would be incapacitated with the kind of pain that you're in. And I'm like, I think what it is is pain is subjective. And you can't judge someone's pain by the look on their face. Um, you just can't. Because we, we're like rabbits in a way. We could be dying inside and we would not show it. Like they're... People that are like that. And there are others that barely stub their toe and they want to die. You know, my husband gets a little cold and oh God, he can't get up. <laughs> you know, but pain is subjective. So you can't judge people, people's pain and, and level of incapacitation based on the look on their face. Um, please don't push me. Okay. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was, oh, the things I bought. Oh, my God. I got sidetracked because my dog finally got off my my stuff. <laughs> um, okay, so I bought from Andy the Nitrous. I bought Gingerbread Lane. There were only like two or three left in her shop, and I snagged it on payday. I was so happy. Like I snagged it on payday. So I've got Gingerbread Lane coming. And then I was listening to Susie from Vegas Golden Knits. And uh, it, I was ecstatic that she was knitting my yarn and showing it off. And she'd only just done a couple of rows. And at first I was all excited because I was like, ooh, I really, that yellow is like, perfect she used this yellow um yellowy orange kind of color as the toes and it's like it's like perfect star trek yellow in my opinion because it's kind of star trek -y or like yellow orange kind of and so I, I felt like that particular color went really well with the yellow bits in my yarn but I'm like oh man did I is my yarn ugly is it gonna look nice now I'm scared because that yellow is so perfect and beautiful and just yellow <laughs> then I'm afraid that my yarn's not gonna look as pretty like it's not gonna look so nice with the pretty yellow toes oh no now I'm scared you gotta go out watch Susie at Vegas Golden Knits and follow her so you can see the progress of my ugly yarn I hope it comes out nice I didn't knit that one she got the prototype because she bought it and I just had it sitting there for a while and I was gonna use it and make a pair of socks out of it and if somebody orders some, then I would sell it. But since it was there, I just sent it. Like, I was like, well, it's the original. May as well. And I just, that's not normally how I do stuff. Normally, I hoard all the yarn that I make. Do you guys think that I give you guys the yarn that I made? No. I keep that shit for myself because I love it. I can't let it go. But I can make you a new one. Like, I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem. Okay, I have an issue. I I used to be, I used to be, I am a cake decorator. I'm not a baker. Cake decorator. Not a baker. When I was a little girl, my mom took me to go get cake decorating lessons because probably we had ADHD and couldn't be, you know, sitting there doing nothing for no reason, like for hours on end without my mom wanting to kill herself probably. So she shoved me in a class full of adults, uh, you know, early, by the way, because their their classes didn't start until they were 12 or 13. Uh, but my mom's like, yeah, 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 she's 12. And they're like, she's not 12. Uh, but we'll make an exception if she's nice and quiet and sits down. So they didn't let my sister join. <laughs> she was not quiet and she would not sit down. So, but I would. So I sat there and I remember the first cake that I did was a Tony the Tiger. And it was so hard. It was it was fine. It wasn't it wasn't that hard, but it was hard 
this was after we learned how to do the piping and all that stuff, right? All the basics. But one of my first creations was Tony the Tiger. And it was like yellow and stripes and this and that with little stars. Every, the whole freaking thing was stars. And, you know, I had fibromyalgia even when I was a kid and I didn't know it. Uh, it was hard to pipe that royal icing or buttercream icing if it was not the right consistency. And my little hands... My little hands would hurt. I'm like, Mom, it hurts. And Mom's like, shut up. It doesn't hurt you. You're exaggerating. You're a liar. <laughs> You're making it up. And I was like, oh, I wish my arms were falling off so that nobody would expect me to make cakes. <laughs> Releasing all my neurosis online. Bad idea. There's more to it than that, but we'll just leave it there because that's weird enough. Yeah. So I, through many, many lessons, learned how to bake cakes and decorate them. So that's what I would do. And so whenever anybody had a birthday or, you know, I mean, there's a lot of trauma that came with that learning situation when I was 11 years old uh, there's a lot of trauma behind that one and maybe one day I'll tell you about the melting clown cake but not today that's trauma for another day as I grew up I learned how to do my own buttercream frostings properly royal icing properly um, how to whip my whipped cream to a consistency that was perfection for any kind of cake, even a wedding cake. Um, I did my nephew's baptism cake, three tiers, mind you. I did my niece's fondant cake, which was new for me, but I did that also three tiers, stacked on top of itself um, and with dowels in the middle and everything. Like I just, I did it all. Um, I knew how to do my shells, I knew how to do flowers. I knew how to do all the borders that you need to do. I can write-ish. Writing is hard. But you don't have to learn how to write. You don't have to write. But you know what I could do? Is I could draw. Like a mofo. I could draw you a Mickey Mouse. You have a little picture of a Mickey Mouse this big. But you want it this big for your freaking 9 inch cake. I will draw it for you. And then I will uh, add it to a... um rice paper okay transfer the image to a rice paper after i've fully hand drawn it I'm not talking about taking a picture and blowing it up and then copying it on rice paper you could do that by the way but not me no i had to hand draw it because i was hand making your cake so i would hand draw and hand transfer onto the rice paper lay the rice paper down do all the piping on the cake, and then paint it with, with uh, piping gel. And so you'd have this beautiful little Mickey Mouse cake for your birthday that I am surprising you with, with an actual, you know, on an actual cake sheet and with actual little cake doily and an actual cake box. Like, I went to a bakery and everybody's like, you went to a bakery. No, I made you a cake. No, that's impossible. Oh, my God. Who can do this? I was like, me. Why? Because I've been trained since I was a little girl. And I know how to make professional cakes. I could do your wedding cake. Will you do my wedding cake? Book? No. No. What? I'll pay you. I don't care. You cannot pay me enough to do your wedding cake. That is so much pressure. I cannot. Oh, what? No, I would do uh, all kinds of designs. I would draw all kinds of things. I I even did it for some friends at work. I did, she loved Piglet. There's this girl at work that used to love Piglet. And I did her a Piglet. And she just, her, her brain melted out of her ears. She couldn't believe that I, that I hand drew a Piglet on a cake. It's really not that hard, you guys. It's really not that hard. You don't even really need to know how to draw. If you just know, you can blow up a picture to like the certain dimensions that you need 
for your cake get a rice paper get a little food color ink pen and trace that mother effer get yourself some piping gel and trace the rest of it with piping gel fill in the color it's a coloring book it's not hard it's really not hard i taught my sister how to do it and and she eventually learned how to do it herself i, I just couldn't do it anymore i couldn't do cakes anymore anyway what i can do pretty awesome things with cakes and but whenever anybody asked me to do something like really wanted me to do something i, I just no don't ask don't ask me to do something for you uh i have this weird thing and i didn't really have a name for it then um i used to call it performance anxiety but I don't think that that's really what it is. Uh, I don't like it when you tell me what you want. <laughs> I mean, uh, how do I put that? It just makes me not want to do it. And I, I'm like, oh, no, don't ask me for a birthday cake. I'll give you a birthday cake. If I feel like it, if I'm up to it, in other words. And the truth of the matter is part of the reason for that is because I might not be feeling well. And if I'm not feeling well and you're asking me for something and I force myself to do it, it's going to come out bad and I'm going to be upset and it's going to stress me out and make me feel sicker longer. But back then I didn't know that that's what my problem was. I called it performance anxiety. I do not have performance anxiety. You guys, do I look like I have performance anxiety? I do not have performance anxiety. I can stand up in front of a crowd and talk. I could sing in front of a crowd. <laughs> Will I do it? Well, probably not. I really could care less. I don't have performance anxiety. I'm not that kind of a nervous person that I'm, oh God, I can't do it. It's performance anxiety. No, it's truly that I really don't know if I'm going to feel up to it. I don't know if I'm going to feel well enough, strong enough. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be in pain that day, if my left leg is going to hurt, my right leg, my left arm, my sh right, left shoulder. I, I just don't, my butt, I don't know what's my hair. I have no idea if my teeth are going to hurt, like if water is going to start coming out of my eyeballs for no reason. Or like, for example, right now, my ear itches. It just won't stop itching. And I feel like I'm itching it so much, like I'm on the outside here. Like I feel like I'm itching it so much that I'm going to make my ear bleed. And I've done that. I've made my nose bleed. I make my, like, I, it's just, it's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, but I go through this constantly all the time. So ever since I was a little girl, anytime anybody asks me for anything, especially my mom, because she really laid on the bread because she didn't understand what was my problem. She was like, you're lazy. I can't believe I raised such a lazy child. And of course, that's it's going to traumatize you into thinking, yeah, I'm just a lazy piece of crap, you know, like, God, I never want to do anything. Oh, I'm exhausted. I, I'm exhausted. I've been exhausted since I was a kid. My mom's favorite thing to say to me was, your blood circulates so slow. And you're just like, what is that? What does that even mean? She says that in Spanish. I'm like, what does that even mean, lady? What is what is that? Your blood circulates so slow. Are you telling me that I like I don't I didn't even I didn't ever I didn't understand. It's like, are you telling me that I'm slow? <laughs> Not slow mentally, but like that I am physic like my blood circulates so slow that I am slow to do anything slow moving slow acting slow behaving slow what <laughs> I don't know I just did not move fast enough for my mother so if I wasn't freaking doing something they was just not she was not having it so I you just, from a young age, when you're raised like that, you just, you learn to freaking power through to get stuff done and just get over yourself. Because nobody wants to hear you bitch and moan. Nobody. But anyway, so that is the freaking story. 
behind why I dye yarn and I keep it. But I put it up for sale and I'm happy to make some for you. And uh, so that's how that works. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes I let the prototype go, but I always miss it. Like, I miss it so much. I'm just so like, mm. And then I'm like, what if you don't like what I made? It would have been better if I had dyed it a little bit different and tweaked it a little bit. I could have done this and that. And then I'd be happier to send you your version of that. And this is why this works for me so well. Because... With a cake, it's not easy. I can't can't easily duplicate. I could save the images, yes, but you'll never really duplicate. Nobody ever really wants the same kind of cake as somebody else got. Everybody wants a different cake, and I can never keep that. I can keep the images, and I have I have most of the images that I've ever made. I have them stored somewhere, but it's not the same. So for dyeing yarn for me is wonderful because I can keep my the yarn that I made and enjoy it just as much as you'll enjoy yours when you get your version of the yarn and that makes it thrills me like like you would never believe like it just it that makes me so happy because I get to get my I get to have my cake and eat it too Whereas before, I was lucky if I got a slice, which is fine because Jesus, nobody needs that much cake. I learned not to like cake as much. Mm -mm. I'm not big on birthday cake. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's the story behind my craziness. Is that weird story? I didn't have anything else to talk about. <laughs> so. Wow. So we were talking about Susie from Vegas Golden Knits. And I went on a freaking complete rant about that. Which was relevant. Because she got my, my prototype. And I'll never see that yarn again. And I miss it so much. Because I love it so much. And I feel like I'm never going to dye it like that white like that again and I mm, I hope she likes it when it, it gets all fully knit up okay so then she started talking about other things and I was I don't know she was talking about other things and then she started talking about was she was gonna sell some of her um needle stash I think she called it. I've never heard anybody call it a needle stash. Because if it's in my stash, in my it's if it's my needle needles are never leaving my stash. Once I buy a pair of, of needles or a whole set of needles, they're gonna get used to hell and, and back. And there's gonna be nothing left of those needles. Look at my Lickia, look at my chow goose, like oh she's got two sets of knitting needles that she was selling. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, I like the first set. That was cool. I might get those. Those are cool. I wonder if she still has them. I'm not sure. And then she pulled out that green meditative set. Okay, so it's the Knitter's Pride Mindful Collection. And I believe it's the warmth set. Because the little bag is white. Um, the little pouch or whatever you call that little zipper bag is white and the uh lettering or the pattern is green like a really soft gentle green and oh my god I wanted that set for so long and she gave it to me for half the price probably less than half the price and I just can't believe that she did that that's I don't care how much she used it. That's, that was like, that's a lot. That was, I'm so thrilled. I'm so grateful. I'm so happy that I saw the video and I didn't hesitate. I just snapped them up 
I went straight because I already follow her. I went straight to her Instagram and I messaged her and she messaged me right back and said, yep, they're yours. I was like, I never get to anybody in time to actually buy it. And it was payday. So I just snapped them up. I'm super jazzed about that. So those are going to be coming soon. And it's like lifting my spirit. So I've got the uh, gingerbread lane coming from Andy the Nitrous. And I've got those, uh, the mindful set coming from Susie from Vegas Golden Knits. And I am so, so thrilled. And I cannot wait to show you guys both of those things because they're going to be so, so cute. So now I have to get off this thing at this point and I have to go find myself in Advent. Last year, I got the Bridgerton Advent. I don't remember by who. It was totally random. It was off of Etsy because the um, woolen women were sold out of their Advent. And honestly, I can't afford it. It is so expensive so worth every penny that you spend on it so worth every penny because their colors are beautiful their trinkets are gorgeous for sure they'll include a bag from their mom and they have a full skein in there as well um it's just beautiful but it's also so much money for me i can't afford it right now um my disposable income got it just swallowed up by this rental that I am in right now. So, yeah. Yeah, that's like an extra $1,200 a month that I'm spending that I, that I didn't have to before. So, <laughs> I, had, I had to cut back on a lot of my spending. Um, so, that really sucks. So now I have to go find a cheap advent from somebody nice and hopefully I'll get it. My husband doesn't know that I spent money on those knitting needles. So he told me to go get the advent. But I, I wonder if, if he would think the same thing if I told him that I spent money on those knitting needles. I feel like... I feel like you'd still say go for it because it's our wedding anniversary coming up. So my dog jumped. <laughs> okay, you guys, I'm done hiding this area here. <laughs> Don't look at me there. Um. Also, I'm getting a cramp. <laughs> what are you looking at? Don't look at me. Oh, okay. Um, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Listen, um, a quick, quick little um shout out here. Um, I didn't talk about the Yarny Whispers uh that we did just this Saturday. I still have some stuff to send out to some people. Uh Susie, we're going to do the um random yarn encounter. I just I have to I have to feel a little bit healthier uh, before I can get to that point. But I will send you a message to let you know that we're still going to do it. And I got to know if you're going to want to do it with me um, live or on Instagram. Like just to run the numbers. Just to have a chit chat. Or you could just run them privately. Just roll that dice four times. I'll send you the link. And um, you can roll those numbers for me. And then message them to me. And then I will dye up the yarn. Um... But I thought that it would be kind of funny if we just like sat on Instagram one of these days and just rolled those numbers and I could see your little face going four. <laughs> I don't know how I could see it all now. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll talk about that. And then I got to send some coupons out. I still have to set them up. I've been working on my sister's Etsy shop. Oh my god, I have so many of her listings up and she's really going to work on those pictures. We're going to work on those pictures. Those those tumblers and stuff that she's got going on, they're beautiful. But honestly, it's so much happening so fast that we literally just can't keep up with with um what we're trying to accomplish in such a short amount of time. It's literally just been a couple of weeks um, 
thank you for anybody that's ordered the um, Krampus pre-order. Oh my goodness. You are amazing. Thank you so much. Every little bit helps. And um, I'm going to be releasing a preview of the tumbler. The mug is yet to get done. Um, the, the yarn is yet to be dyed up. But I will dye that up based on the tumbler that I'm going to be releasing probably tonight after I post this video. What else? Um, still working on that Etsy shop. So then I got to do those coupons for anybody that needs those coupons. I'm going to be sending those out soon. Um, I got to sit down and write a letter with actual ink. Um, and then I have to, oh, I already got the pattern for Elizabeth. That is Cast on Calamity on Ravelry. Sorry, I'm revealing all your details, but I'm sure you don't mind because <laughs> we're all knitters here. But Cast on Calamity got these amazing gloves, which I will be talking about next time if I don't forget. Don't let me forget. I will absolutely forget, so leave it in the comments and then I won't forget. Um, She did these, Um, she like had these these mittens, these fingerless, fingerless mittens on her Ravelry queue. I got those for her. She won them in the Yarny Whispers. They are amazing. I think I'm going to get them for myself, you guys, because they're beautiful. Mando and the child, like the little baby Yoda. Um, Fair Isle, color work, whatever. Oh my god, they're so beautiful. So beautiful by a designer that I've never heard of which is i mean really nice because she has got a lot of really nice like it's not a lot a lot but she's got a nice little portfolio there of like fair isle type knitting and it's just beautiful so i'll go into more detail on that in the next episode Woo! my finger almost went up my dog's butt no it didn't i just grabbed her tail <laughs> Okay, all right, you guys. I think that's enough jibber jabber. I will see you guys in the next episode. Hopefully, I have enough energy to sit at the actual table. Oh my god. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Where'd you find all these pictures? Your hat is ruining it. Where'd you find all these pictures? Please just if I do thank you for me as well, Papa. I miss Red. He was an awesome dog. That's a lot of years on the It's almost 20 years, actually, yeah, 20 years ago that picture was taken, almost. 19, 19 years roughly. I like it. Why is there a straw? <laughs> There's space for a straw in there, I mean. Did you like the, the poppy? Did you see that? Your hand's covering it. Yeah. That's a really nice coat. Like it? Mm -hmm. I miss Red. He was he was my favorite dog. As much as I love Dante, he was awesome. Bit me three times <laughs> on the face, yeah. On the face? Yeah. He was old though. Okay. I want I wanna I wanna get a good picture of you like was that a tear? No, I did this. Oh, <laughs> I don't love it. Man, man. I don't see who's on that thing. I don't think I can use on there. They had to cover a couple people. That's the low. 
German dude. Fucking down. That's the name table, yeah. I'd better go on about picking she was looking down. God. I was all this one there. I was a grandmother to do and I was holding some of the drawer sergeants. 